welcome or welcome back to 4F Beauty. When will I be YouTube famous? I don't know. Probably never. However, what I do know is I'm titting about with this blooming wig like nobody's business and I need to stop and talk to you instead. Right, this is, if I've put them up in the right order, episode four of my What If They Were Good series. And if the thumbnail, the title, and if you've read it, the description didn't give you enough of a clue, these should be the dead giveaway that today it is Maleficent's turn to have a makeover and turn from the archetypal bad girl into a pretty little Disney princess just waiting for Prince Charming to come along. So, if you want to know exactly how I achieved this look then, my darlings, you are in precisely the right place. Put your feet up, grab a drink and a snack, move any spinning wheels out of the way and enjoy. Welcome back from the intro. Um, this is, if I put them up in the right order, the fourth in my What Are They Good series. This came about, I'll put a picture here, of, of course, Maleficent. I believe my invitation was lost in the post. Um, this came about from an insomnia moment where there were a lot of Disney related palettes coming out. I'm looking at you here, Colourpop. And I just kept thinking, I really prefer the colours in the villain's palette to the princess's palette. Which then led on to why do the villains always have much better makeup and much better outfits? Which led on to what if the villains were the princesses? And so this initially five part series was born. So, it um, doesn't have to just be females. I have done Hades as a princess. Pretty sure he's gunning for my guts right now. Um, although I did make him look very pretty. This is, um, I wanted to do something a little bit different for my Halloween stuff. I've got Halloween films up, I've got Broken Doll tutorial from last year, I've got my Halloween in July collab that I did which has got the uh, zombie punk beauty guru with glitter coming out of his rotting flesh. <laughs> Trust me it sounds better than it. It looks better than it sounds. Um, I've got the scary scarecrow that I did there is another collab which I'm hoping I'm going to have time to film for. If I do, that will be going up on the 28th. So I'm not going to tell you what that is. Because if I don't get time to film it, I'll save it and do it next year. But for Halloween this time, I wanted to do something just a little bit different. So I thought this would be ideal. These new villains as princesses. Um, this is still a, t a teaching channel and my chronic pain is currently through the roof so if you need to speed me up because I'm going and that's my phone typical timing hold on I don't even know where I got to uh, this is a teaching channel speed me up I think I did that did I put the picture up of Maleficent over here possibly um, in the first episode of this series I did Ursula and I used the purples in here to do my face purple. And this does have a green for Maleficent, but I'm not entirely sure a Disney princess would be green. Because green, not to me, but I know green in a lot of cases is a connotation for evil and stuff. So... So I'm not going to do green face, however, I am going to do the um, purple eyeshadow, possibly pulling some yellow in, um, 
possibly pulling some green in, maybe a greeny gold or something. But I want to bring the yellow in for her eyes because they're very, if you know what I mean by that. Okay, face is washed, moisturised, SPF'd and primed and I will now zoom you in and talk through eye shapes because um, anybody can follow any tutorial even if they have hooded lids or deep set eyes they just need to know the workaround but in order to know the workaround you need to know which type of eye you have now I've got deep set eyes which are often mistaken as being hooded because I have I'm fiddling with my camera sorry uh, you realize that you've been wobbling pain through the roof fibro fog nothing um, regular viewers will know what I'm about to say so you can skip forward until you see me wave a brush with some color on it at you now I get the same issues that people with hooded lids get I get transference of shimmer onto the upper lid I get if I'm going to cut the crease I can't just cut the socket I've got to go onto the upper lid and when I'm using even when I'm using glitter glues glitter will wear off right through the middle now I'm going to talk you through how to work out whether you've got deep set eyes or hooded eyes then I'm going to talk you through the workaround when I relax my brows and look straight forward you can see all of my mobile lid from inner to outer corner you can't see much of it but you can see it so I haven't got hooded lids it's only if your static or upper lid completely covers your mobile lid right down to your lash line that you have either a full or a half hooded lid or what's known as a mono or an Asian eye I'll demonstrate on this eye because this is the eye that I'm blind in so I can close this one easily and still see basically if I cover my visible mobile lid this side and close my eye you can see I've got as much lid space again it tucks back away and if I cover the static lid and do the same thing you can see I've got lid space above it as well that tucks back away and it's those bits of lid rubbing together that give me the same issues that people with hooded lids have so the workaround if you've got hooded lids get a brush something like this or a pencil brush and just sketch out on your static lid where you need your new crease to fall now obviously that's going to reduce the space between the crease and the brow so just use slightly smaller blending brushes if however you've got deep set eyes like I have when we're blending a colour through the crease we just have to sit back, stop, relax our brows and just check we've brought it up high enough that it can be seen when our eyes are open so two very different workarounds for two very different types of eyes that's why it's important to know whether you do have hooded or deep set eyes right time to put some colour on right this brush is clean it's just stained this is a Luxie 205 tapered blending brush it's basically round and fluffy now I'm actually going to go in, I think, with an all shimmer look today. I'm going to use the uh, BH Weekend Festival Fat Palette because I haven't used this for ages. And I'm going to go in initially with the shade called Wicked because it just... Mm. Actually, no, I think I'm going to do like I did before. I'm going to start with the lightest and go to the deepest. Yeah, I think that might be a better idea, actually. So, different brush to start with. I'm going to go for a Morphe M321. And I'm going to go into um, Euphoria, which is a gorgeous yellow gold. I'm going to spray this. Don't go in with a wet brush to a pressed pigment. I'm just going to spray this before I apply it to my eye. You can use any spray. You can use a moisturising spray like Mario Badescu or MAC Fix Plus. You can use setting spray, priming spray, finishing spray. You can even just use plain water in a um, spray bottle. And soon you in just fractionally more. There we go. Right, I've got a little mirror here that I'm going to look down into so that you can see what I'm doing over here. And hopefully that way I will remain in the screen. So 
I'm going to start off, normally I do my lid last, but I actually want to start with this gorgeous yellow gold. Now, um, I do have to stretch this lid out ever so slightly because of this deep creasing here. Do not do that if you don't have to. That's when my eye was pulled around when I was a kid at the ophthalmic hospital. And if I don't do this, the assumer uh, just sits in the crease and then as I'm moving my eye through the day, it just sort of cascades down my face, which is not good. Right, clean and dry the brush off. And I'm going to go into Neon, which is the, the green right next to it. Same thing, wet the brush, once the pigment's on it. And then I'm going to put this on the outer part of the lid. Dry the brush off, pick up some more pigment, cut the brush, and apply. I don't normally do this part of the lid first, I normally do this part of the lid last because I'm doing an all shimmer look today. It's not as imperative to do this bit last. So, clean and dry the brush off and put it back down over there. Grab the Luxie brush that I was going to start off with and go into Wicked. Beautiful. Now the eye primer that I'm using is the one that I've used ever since I first tried it and it's the Crow and Pebble eye primer. I do have a discount code for that, I don't earn from it, um, but I love the Crown Pebble Primer. The, the one that I use is the white one. They've also got a deep chocolate brown, a black and then three other skin tone shades in between. Um, it goes on dry, you don't need to set it, which means you can blend colours on it straight away. Right, you can see I'm doing circular movements this way as I come towards the nose. And then a bit of a bounce. And then reverse in the direction on the way back out. The reason I'm doing that is because this very, very gently moves the skin around. So you don't get any white areas. Because I'm 45, I've lost 14 stone, my eyelids move. But I know 22 year olds that genetically have less taut eyelids. And you can blend with a shimmer. Um, it'll go one of two ways. You'll either get um, a hell of fallout and really, really have to work hard to get it to blend and not be patchy. Or you'll get like this one where you can just blend with it as if it was a matte. Um, and what you will find is, as you blend, you are blending some of the shimmer element away. So it won't be as shimmery, but it does still retain some of the glimmer. Which I really like. I actually, I actually really like doing an all shimmer look. I know a lot of people don't like it, but I think it can be really impactful. I came up here to get control and then I've come back out again for the blending because I want to put as little pressure on as possible so I hold the brush right at the end. In fact I usually uh, press it against my hand like that to help stabilise it and you can see just how quickly <clears throat> that actually applied. I'm just going to sit back and check that I've got the same shape both sides because I'm not James Charles, I don't photoshop my look. 
which I know that he does in some of his, I don't use any filters, I don't use any fine tuning, face tuning or, any, or anything at all. The only thing I do in terms of manipulating what you see is I tweak the sound to make the sound as loud as I can because obviously I've got a very soft voice and at the moment I'm relying on the camera's microphone so I've tweaked the settings on the camera and then I adjust the settings when I'm editing to try and get the volume at a decent level. Um, I don't do any adjustments to the lighting, the shading, the brightness, the contrast, the saturation or anything and I certainly don't use filters at all because I want you to be able to achieve the look that I create. I don't want you to see something that's been fine-tuned and face-tuned and filtered and you think, oh, why can't I make it look like that? Well, you can't make it look like that because they didn't make it look like that, basically. Right. I'm going to pause you before I get onto a whole rant about misconceptions. Uh, <laughs> and I'm going to chuck some foundation on and some base products, etc. And I'll be back to finish off this eye look with you. For you, there will be no delay at all. You will see me instantly. I, however, will see you the very next time that I press the record button. Hello, I am back. As you can see, I have gone for purple brows. This is the Revolution Pigment Pomade in Royal Purple. Annoyingly, they only seem to have the white and the scarlet red left in stock at the moment. Everything else is out of stock and doesn't appear to be coming back in. Now I don't know whether they are changing the formula, changing the packaging, um, whether they're bringing new colours in. I don't know what's going on but what I do know is it's really annoying because I love those pigment pomades. I love having coloured brows and uh, I just hope they're, they're just tweaking the formula maybe or tweaking the packaging or something. Right going in with my flat top brush and I think I'll go in with Wicked and I'm gonna literally draw a little bit of a line there just at the edge and then continue the colour along underneath my eye because I, I want the, the colours to join but I don't necessarily I still want to see the green here I don't want to get any thick amount of purple at the edge because you know normally I'll put a darker element on the outer third there but I wanted to do something a little bit different with this look today nice, nice, nice right this is the brush from the Tarte Graveyard Girl palette. I love it because it's flat topped and it's chunky so it's great for getting up under your lashes. And I'm going to go in with, I think that green, the neon. No I won't. Because green and purple will muddy together, particularly if they are shimmers. I'm going to go in with Magical, which is a champagne gold. And just use that to really just soften that lower lash line. Not that it's showing up in my viewfinder. It's showing up in my mirror, but it's not showing up in my viewfinder. So hopefully, because my camera records in a higher quality than the viewfinder displays. Hopefully that will actually show up on the camera. Pretty, 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 pretty. Right, I'm going to go in with this squidgy revolution eyeball highlighter. This is I see you as an EYE. See you. And it's 
a white base with a pink shift and the brush that I'm using is actually a lipstick brush that I bought from eBay probably about a decade ago now. So I'm just going to pop a bit of that up under the tail of my brow just to help raise the brow look and make it look slightly more open and then put a bit of highlight in the inner corner here to brighten that up and then I'll run that down and just blend it in with the purple same thing on this side right I'm going to pause you for one last time while I chuck some more of this highlight over my face mascara, lippy hair and I'll be back with the finished look so I will see you right now I am back and of course I've got Maleficent's horns on and I decided that this week with the purple in it would go really well with pulling in the purple uh, makeup what do you think? if I put Maleficent back here again hi girly what do you reckon? Maleficent as a Disney princess because she wouldn't have a crown she'd, she'd still have her horns let's be fair now but she would look with them just checking I didn't have any lipstick on my teeth this is uh, Jeffrey's Unicorn Blood by the way um, the mascara that I used was Bad Girl Bang so this is Maleficent if she were a good girl if she were a princess. What do we think? I actually really like this wig, I have to be honest. Right, if you are one of my regular 4F babies, please double check you are still subscribed. Um, Monday. I always log on a Monday what my numbers are for the week. I had three emails Monday telling me I had three new subscribers. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. And yet when I went onto my channel to upload some videos, I was actually down by two. So effectively, I may have gained three, but YouTube deleted five people from my channel in one day. Literally in the space of about six hours. So, if you are a member of the 4F family, please double check you are still subscribed even if I still appear in your uh, recommended videos or your, your feed because there is still a chance that you may have been unsubscribed um, while you're doing that if you've chosen to have notifications on just double check that that's still all okay because you know YouTube are just they're not making it easy for the smaller channels right now let's put it that way if However, you are new to my channel. Hi, hello, welcome. I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, this is, yeah, it's, to be fair, it's probably a pretty fair indication of what you're going to get from me on this channel. Uh, sometimes I'm a little bit nuttier, sometimes I'm a little bit more sane. Um, but you will normally get me waffling on about all kinds of things um, while I put makeup on and talk you through putting makeup on. So uh, if you've enjoyed this and you would like to join the 4F family, uh, there is a red subscribe button down there. Please feel free to hit that and turn it to grow. Uh, and then obviously if you want to get emails through, there's no guarantee YouTube will actually send them, uh, but you can try notification bell and then jumping through all the hoops of yes, I want notifications, yes, I want all the notifications, yes, I want them sent. One of the days when you could just like a channel and YouTube would tell you when they put new videos up. But all that remains for me to say, as ever, is you'll stay fabulous, darling, and I'll see you next time. Bye for now. Mind that spinning wheel.